Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Welcome back, everybody. This is theCUBE. We are live at Big Data SV in San Jose, California. We're winding down here on day one of uh, just a full day of live interviews on theCUBE. Um, you know, one of the things we've been talking about all day today, and frankly for the last couple of years in the big data space, is the partnership uh, ecosystem. Uh, you know, big data is very much more than just a single technology. It requires a lot of different parts and a lot of cooperation among partners. Uh, we're going to continue on that theme in this segment. We've got John Kreisa, who's the VP of Strategic Marketing at Hortonworks. And a frequent CUBE guest, yeah. welcome back. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and John Haddad, Senior Director of Product Marketing and Informatica. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thank you. Um, so let's just start at the top. Tell us a little bit about your relationship, John. I'll start with you yeah. um, in terms of how did, the, how did the two companies come together, uh, Informatica and Hortonworks, to establish this partnership? Right, <clears throat> so we've been working with Hortonworks for several years now, since you formed as a company, yeah, actually. Very early on. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, several, lots of customers b using us, both uh, Hortonworks and Informatica together uh, for a variety of use cases. And I think what's propelled this uh, partnership uh, to be successful is our customers, our joint customers ask, you know, when Hortonworks goes into an account, they say, we'll say, oh, we're using Informatica for data integration and data quality. Now we'd like to be able to do that on Hadoop. And Hortonworks being the natural, you know, pure open source vendor, it's a natural marriage of having the best of open source with the best of um, data management mm -hmm. together. Um, and so that's why our, our customers, our joint customers are using us, is to leverage a lot of the skills they have in place today to take advantage of the new mm -hmm. technologies and innovation we're seeing in the open source community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, when we talk to practitioners, one of the key pain points is integrating Hadoop with the rest of their infrastructure. So obviously you need right. partnerships among the different players to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But specifically when you're talking about integration, you're talking about data integration, you're actually talking about connecting systems yeah. and that's exactly what uh, the role you play. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, John, from Hortonworks' perspective, talk a little bit about, um, I mean, we've heard a lot about your partnership strategy, but specifically mm -hmm. when it comes to the data integration space and mm -hmm. how important that is to enabling what Hortonworks can uh, bring to an organization. Sure, great, and uh, the partnership, I'll echo what John said, it's been a great partnership. One that's been based on, on engineering and looking to mutually solve the problems that the customers mm -hmm. have around data, to your point. Um, and, you know, Hadoop as a, as a platform runs on data. I mean, it, is the, it must consume data, and it really the value comes out of it. It's loaded into that for transformation and analytics and the things that, that can be done there. So it's been a great partnership with Informatica because there is a natural synergy between what Informatica's skills are and what their expertise is and what platform and what our skills are. So, so therefore, it's a great benefit for the customer to, to use these two technologies together and for us to work together to help them understand how they work together mm -hmm. and how they can get benefit. So talk about some of those joint customers. What are some of the, the more interesting things you're seeing uh, in terms of leveraging both technologies in order to kind of build out this more modern data architecture that brings in you know, some of the more traditional tools and mm -hmm. data warehouses and things that are going are gonna to be here for a long time yeah. and some of the things you do. What are some of the more interesting things you're seeing? John, we'll start with you. Sure. So I think um, there's a very wide range of how the technologies work together and how they're being applied. Everything from, and, and I'll start kind of top down, the customers you know, ultimately you're trying to get to a data lake and it's something that, mm -hmm. that we've been talking about with, uh, with Informatica for some time now. Um, but you know, if you look at where they start, they usually start with one or two simple use cases um, and build it up to that more complex deployment. Um, one would be you know, trying to get a 360 degree view of the customer, right? They have all these different data sources that they need to bring together to get that single unified view of that customer. They're going to break down the existing silos. It's another place where working with Informatica is so great because they can help bring those data sources from those different um, components, components into the platform so that the customers can really achieve that 360 degree view of the customer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. from your perspective, I mean, John mentioned the data lake, and we, we hear that a lot as kind of the, the kind of the foundation that, that companies are starting to build out using Hadoop. Uh, but of course, right. an important part of that is uh, things like compliance and governance and data quality, which yeah. is obviously where you know Informatica plays as well. Yeah. Um, what does Informatica bring to the table in terms of helping you know make sure that data lake doesn't turn into a data swamp, or it's just right. a lot of data mm -hmm. where you don't have any kind of handle on it? That's right. Yeah. So. 
uh, like John was saying, they're using us for a variety of different use cases. Some of these use cases are things that they've been doing before. They want to do them much better. Now, in the traditional world, you had data governance. Uh, and when I say data governance, what does that include? It includes data quality. It includes mastering your data, managing, you know, managing your master data, customer entities, customer relationships, product relationships. It includes data security, all the things that help you manage data as an asset. That's true in the new world, too. That doesn't go away, right? And, and the conversation has shifted over the last year from uh, the basics, right, uh, storing data at scale, processing it at scale, to, you know, getting through those, those basic mm -hmm. fundamentals to, oh, now we're using this at an enterprise-wide scale, not just for one project and one use case, but for multiple projects and multiple use cases. It's the data lake, right? It started off as a, we started off doing data warehouse optimization and offloading, you know, to kind of control costs. Yep. Then you do the one project, the second project, and then it, that gets popular, that gains momentum. So you need to bring in that data governance, those disciplines into the new world. Mm. Um, and, and so we're helping our customers jointly uh, drive, you know, you guys rolled out the Data Governance Council, mm -hmm. an initiative, and you can talk more about that. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been doing data governance for, for many, many years, and, you know, data quality, MDM, data security, and so on. Um, and you can leverage those, once again, getting back to the skills aspect of it, is you can leverage those same skills now in the Hadoop world, and you don't necessarily have to retrain or hire new people mm -hmm. to do those types of things. And you can also leverage a lot of the work you've already done in the traditional world. You talked about integration, integrating Hadoop into the current infrastructure and ecosystem. Well, MDM today still runs on traditional technology, right? Um, and it's create, we've created that golden record, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, managing all the relationships in a household or between employees and customers and, and organizations. That golden record can serve as a way to, to join disparate data sets that are sitting in the data lake and when you discover the, all the insights related to customers in certain demographics, you can use that information to enrich the master data. So it's bi-directional, the, mm -hmm. the information that's going between the data lake and the MDM system, for example. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and I think you, you touched on something really important around the data governance because when you, when you, some of the practitioners we've talked to, some of the challenges have been, well, okay, we started with this concept of um, a data lake, we're going to offload data from our existing systems for some cost savings, but they didn't think about the data governance at that point. And then you say, well, well, don't I have a foundation here where now I can build applications on top of it? Well, you don't unless you've got the governance because then you start building right. prototypes and you realize you get the compliance team involved, you get the business side, the lawyer, you, you, well, you can't do that. You didn't, yeah. where did this data come from? Can you prove that where it came from? Yeah. And those questions start, can very easily derail big data projects if you right. don't address them up front. Are you noticing uh, either of you in terms of customers recognizing that earlier in the process? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would, I would say yes. I'd say, you know, for all the reasons that you talked about and that John talked about, um, the requirements from the enterprise don't change once they start to deploy applications on a new platform, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, they still have to have the, the governance and the security and the other components that go around that. Um, I think, you know, with Hadoop as it matures and gets used for broader and broader use cases, it's a natural that those things mm -hmm. are going to be required. So that, that is one reason we started the data governance initiative. It's mm -hmm. kind of a very common way that, that Hortonworks kind of tries to rally the ecosystem and the community around mm -hmm. solving a problem in open source for, you know, for the enterprise. So that's very representative. This one happens to be around, you know, governance and making sure that the, the platform can solve the governance um, requirements, you know, mm -hmm. alongside and working with the ecosystem and helping to drive that forward. So, you know, that was, that's really very true in terms of how it, you know, how we're evolving that platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and John, now I want to turn back to, to Informatica, kind of your, your role in the big data landscape. Right. Um, you know, because it, frankly, I was a little naive. Some of the things you've been doing with your customers for a long time around um, not just the structured data, which is what, you know, you're known for, but right. also a lot of multi-structured data work you've been, you've been doing. And in fact, quite That's a right. bit of the data under management, if, if you will, yeah. in the Informatica customer base is, is this multi-structured kind of data. Talk That's a little right. bit about yeah. uh, what you've been doing in that space, not just, you know, in the last six months, but over the last several years. That's right, yeah. So um, I can't remember the exact statistic, but like something like 80% of the data is unstructured or semi-structured or complex formatted data. Machine log files, clickstream data, or just industry standard data, right? Like in healthcare, you have HL7 and HIPAA and, and financial mm -hmm. services. You got FIX and SWIFT and insurance. You got NACHA and Accord and all these different standards. You got, you know, market data that's streaming in. 
and it's coming in at different latencies, right? And so you don't want an impedance mismatch between the rate at which the data is being generated and the rate at which you can ingest it into the data lake. So a few things that we've been doing over many, many years, un unfortunately we, ha we haven't necessarily broadcasted the word out as widely as we'd like, is the ability to stream data directly into Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, this is, once again, you know, machine data, real-time data, sensor data. Um, but also, once you bring the data in, uh, how do you parse and extract out the elements that you need, right? Because it is a complex or multi-structured formatted data. Um, and so we have pre-built parsers to do that so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have pre-built parsers for HL7 in healthcare, for Fix and Swift in financial service, EDI in manufacturing. Uh, and you can build custom parsers, you know, using a visual development environment. That's one thing that we bring to increase productivity. And we've done some benchmarks with Hortonworks that we've increased productivity over the, the hand coding. Not, not that there's anything wrong with hand coding in certain cases, but for things like ETL or data quality where there's pre-built transforms, and once again, we've been doing this over many years, why reinvent the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. You know, leverage, leverage those capabilities. The same for the parsing of the structured data, and then, and then you need to integrate that uh, with the structured data. So what we see very common is, how do I do transformations and integration on these different types of data sets? Well, the first thing you need to do is not just parse and extract, but normalize, standardize all the different codes you know, that you have in a traditional type of you know, uh, more structured schema. That's already been done for you. You don't have that with all the, the messy types of data. Now, that's not to say that you don't always want some messy data to look for outliers mm -hmm. and, and anomalies. Um, and this is another concept in the, in the data lake, right, mm -hmm. is being able to go from the swamp to the sandbox, from the sandbox to the uh, more refined mm -hmm. reservoir, let's say. So there's these different stages and categories of data, and you just have to recognize that data needs to be fit for use or fit for mm -hmm. purpose. Well, there's a spectrum of yeah. use cases. Uh, exactly. It's not a yeah. simple, you know, one application. Um, and that's what the data lake is all about, the mm -hmm. whole concept, and what Yarn <clears throat> helps enable yep. running different types of applications on the same corpus of data where you can now leverage, reuse that data, and the value of that data goes up the more you, the more you reuse it. Right. That's right. Um, so talk a little bit about how you're helping companies consume this faster, lower that time to insight. I know you've um, worked together on this trial download. Talk a little bit about that, what you guys are doing together there. Yeah, yeah want to, I want to go ahead. I mean, I would, yeah. I would say, you know, one of the big things, John touched on it early on, was just the reuse of skills, right? Mm -hmm. It's very important for um, the practitioners and, and users to be able to not necessarily have to learn new skill sets, but take advantage of what they have already. And I think that's one of the things that we're, we both commonly preach together is, hey, you can reuse your skills on this new infrastructure new kinds of value and that's where the integration has come along so what we've done is we've worked together to make it so that users can now just with a single download get a sense of how to use the, the uh, Informatica tools on top of the Hadoop platform on top of Hortonworks data platform uh, with a single uh, virtual machine download that they can run on their on their platform with built-in tutorials so we're pretty excited about that mm -hmm. it's something we worked on together mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to give yeah. details on how they can use it but yeah, I mean, so just like, you know, Hortonworks has a wealth of tutorials for, for learning Hadoop and, and how to do certain things on Hadoop, we've included some uh, tutorials for web log processing or change da dealing with change data, some common problems as you move from the old world to the new world. Um, so I think that's a, and we'll, we need to add more of those types sure. of tutorials because I think that's what um, helps bridge the gap between, you know, the traditional skills and uh, required to do the work and, and some of the new skills yeah. and just trying to make it easier for people to, to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, I think there's, mm -hmm. there's you know, it's a combination of you need to, to, to build up the skill set of, mm -hmm. of practitioners and you also have to look into the vendor community to build software and, and tools that just make it easier, lower the bar. Mm -hmm. Right. It sounds like you have to attack it from both angles. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Not kind of one or the other. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and, the, and the reason I keep bringing that up is because that's probably the number one reason why uh, our customers talk to us is like we can scale up the storage, we can scale up the processing on Hadoop, but mm -hmm. we can't scale up the skills to do the work, right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we're yeah. running uh, close on time, so I want to yeah. get your take on what's going on here this week. And you know, we've kind of dubbed it Big Data Week mm -hmm. in yeah. San Jose. Yeah. Um, the Strata Hadoop world is kind of kicking off. I think officially any minute now. Yeah. Um, what are you looking for this week? You know, beyond kind of necessarily what you guys might be announcing, but just in general, what are you expecting to see at the show? Um, maybe from customers. Mm -hmm. what, what's kind of top of mind for you? I mean, John, why don't we start with you? Sure. Yeah. I mean. I 
I'm looking to hear um, more exciting use cases, how kind of the state of the state is being advanced mm -hmm. in terms of how it's being used by the enterprise. I mean, I think just being unique where, where I sit in terms of the Hadoop ecosystem, I have a pretty good idea of what's happening in the technology, so I'd like to hear how companies and also partners and things are integrating with Hadoop to help drive more value out of this, to help you know with the acceleration. When we, we see Hadoop accelerate, Adoption, and I want to understand how are these other partners helping with that, and what are some of the interesting use cases that, that might be emergent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, John? Um, I look at it both from a technology perspective and a business perspective. So, from a technology perspective, um, I'm looking at you know new projects, new things that are emerging in the open source community. Because, like I said at the beginning, we feel that the best for the community and the best for our customers is taking. Um, the innovations that are occurring in the open source community, combining that with the innovations that we've created over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just like we use MapReduce and Hive and Yarn and Tez and uh, Spark and all these different things that have come out of the community, um, and, and we want to help kind of hide some of that complexity mm -hmm. because there's new things coming out all the time and we want to help the community adopt those innovations faster by hiding some of that complexity with mm -hmm. our development environment. So I'm always looking at some of the new technologies that are emerging and, and working with R&D to say, well, you know, should we be leveraging it for these types of transformations or for these types of processing? And that's, that's what we've done. So that's one. And then the second is, like John said, the different types of use cases. I'm always interested in the, the use cases, what where uh, companies are in their journey, in their big data journey. A lot of them, as we said, start with data warehouse optimization, move to the data lake, move to the 360 customer analytics, mm -hmm. then to like, you know, real time operational intelligence. They, they have a vision just like we have a vision, and I'm always curious to see where they are in that, that journey and that evolution. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. uh, you, it's, it, customers can sometimes be unpredictable, and it's, it's fun to watch where they might take this market. You know, things, you know, we can, we can prognosticate, but you never know really right. uh, where customers are going to take yeah. it, which is really interesting, especially in this space, because, because of some of the open source nature, you've got practitioners who are also creating technology and innovating. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really mm -hmm. interesting market. Uh, market to cover, market to watch. So guys, yeah. uh, John from uh, Hortonworks, John from Informatica, thanks for joining us on theCUBE, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, guys, thanks for watching and we will be right back after this uh, to wrap up day one.